Hello again, this is Dawn. Um, we're going to get started with our webinar. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today um, on this information session for the Advanced Certificate in Project Management. Um, we're going to talk today about the certificate, about the curriculum, some career opportunities available in project management, and then about the application process. We will also have time at the end for some of your questions, and you are also welcome to um, type questions into your chat bar as well, and we will try to address um, any questions you have at the end. So again, uh, this is Dawn Pickin. I am a program director here at CUNY SPS. Um, in the Office of Professional Education and Workplace Learning. I am joined today by Brandon Kelly, who is the coordinator for this program, as well as Beth Willette, who is an adjunct professor in the program. Beth is a PMP. She runs uh, her own company called the Willette Group, which is a project management consulting firm. And we will be hearing from both Brandon and Beth a little bit later in our presentation. So I first wanted to tell you a little bit about our school for those of you who may not be familiar with CUNY or the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Um, for those of you who may not be from the New York area, uh, CUNY is the City University of New York. We are the public university system of New York City and the largest urban university in the country. CUNY SPS was founded in 2003, and we're one of the 26 schools in the CUNY system. That includes senior colleges, community colleges, and professional schools as well. Uh, we offer um, at CUNY SPS a variety of programs, including undergraduate degrees, which are designed for people who have some college credit but never actually completed the degree. Um, some of our bachelors are in fields such as human relations, disability studies, and nursing. We also offer master degree programs in fields such as business management and leadership, youth studies, and museum studies. We also have certificate programs at both the undergraduate and graduate level. The project management certificate program is a graduate level program which means you must have at least a bachelor's degree to apply, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Most of our programs are offered online and CUNY SPS was ranked 15th in the nation in US News and World Report's list of 2019 best online bachelor's degree programs. So that's something we're really proud of. <clears throat> Currently, we have over 3,400 students enrolled in our programs and most of our students are working adults, so our programs are really geared towards teaching adult students. So a little bit more about the project management certificate specifically. Um, we formed this certificate, it started in 2008. It is a fully online program and it's offered in an asynchronous format. So that means you can log into the course site at times that are convenient for you from week to week to complete your coursework. So it's unlike this webinar where you had to log in at a specific time and you can do so um, in our online certificate program at your convenience. Um, you don't need any prior project management experience to take this program, though as I mentioned, you do need to have a bachelor's degree. Um, our faculty are practitioners in the field who have all earned their PMP, which is the Project Management Professional Credential, and they have many years of experience working as project managers, so they really do bring their real-world experience to the classroom. <clears throat> and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Beth. She is one of our faculty, as I mentioned, who's going to talk about the field of project management and the certificate program curriculum. Beth? Great, thank you so much. So I'm excited to be with you and I'm so proud of the program that Dawn has shared with you. Um, and just to sort of set the foundation, we thought it'd be a good idea to just define, it's always good to know what we're talking about, project management, what is it? So what you see on the slide there is actually the definition from the project management body of knowledge. So it's a, a project is an endeavor that's got a time to it, so it's temporary. 
can we create something that hasn't been created before, unique product, service, or result? Um, and so we use that definition around everything that we do that is related to project management as we apply knowledge and skills and tools to creating that unique result. And so project management shows up in everything that we do, see, or breathe, actually. Um, I, I've been currently working with some manufacturing companies, so obviously there's a tremendous amount of project management as they think about new products to develop, as they actually take it to the manufacturing floor and the steps for the materials we need and how to build things, how to vet it, how to sure it before it goes into the hands of the client. Um, as well, IT systems, their projects. We, we need to build systems. We've all used the apps on our phone. There was a project that was set up to create that app based on some needs, some requirements, uh, building out what we want to create, creating it, testing it, and then delivering it to the customers. So there's project management really shows up everywhere. I do a lot of travel when I'm in airports. I see project management all over the place from a new restaurant that's opening up to a renovation of a terminal, um, et cetera. So it really, really is all over the place. This semester, I had quite a few folks from the healthcare industry. And so there were a lot of linkages with what was going on in healthcare with some of the new, new mandates for having things all computerized and some of the projects that they were involved with to get all of the, the patient data, as one example, onto the system that the hospitals were required to use. So project management truly is um, really in every facet of our lives. So it's not just something for a career or curriculum. It becomes a life skill as well. But let's talk about the curriculum. Um, and what we have to offer here. So there are three courses. There, each course is three credits, so the whole program is a nine credit program. Uh, the first one is the foundation uh, um, of everything we're gonna be doing, so that's our fundamentals of project management program. And that is the, the first one that you'll wanna take. Then you could follow it by either of the other two, either the communications and leadership, or the managing triple constraint, and the triple constraint is scope, time, and cost. So the foundation really sets the, the expectations for the things we need to manage as project managers, and that the scope, what are we doing, what are we delivering, the timeline, the budgeting, managing the resources and the people, uh, levels of quality, any risks that we have to consider along the way. Uh, who are the stakeholders we have to manage? And so we take a deep look into each of those components across the project life cycle that are very critical and important to that foundation and the fundamentals of project management. When we take a look at the communication and leadership curriculum, that course will compare and contrast different leadership styles and approaches. Um, how do you communicate with your stakeholders? What is your preferred style of communication? How do you bridge your style across organization and cultural boundaries? Um, I'm doing work currently on a client site up in Minneapolis. It's a different culture. There are different cultural norms because of the type of business they are. And so understanding that has to um, Im influence how I communicate with the folks with whom I'm working. And that's something that we really would highlight in this communications and leadership. But really talking about some of those challenges, too, and how to be effective. Not every team is physically in the same space. We have a lot of challenges with that virtual team approach. And then, of course, we want to be ethical leaders. So we do um, touch on that as well. When we go to the triple constraint curriculum, we really are taking a deep dive look into what is scope, time, and cost really take to be effective in managing them. That's called the triple constraint. And if you can imagine an equilateral triangle with scope, time, and cost on each of the, the, the lines, if I change the timeline and want it sooner, that triangle is going to skew, and it's going to impact what I can deliver and maybe how much it's going to cost. And so we talk about those critical relationships 
of the scope of the time and of the cost and how we can use some techniques and tools to manage that most effectively. So those are cool things um, just in general about project management, but what's in it for you? So we've got folks online who are saying, hey, I've heard about this thing. Why do I even care about this certificate? And so I wanted I want to share with you what some of my students have said to me because I I know for sure it's going to give you some of those best practices, some new approaches, some tools that you can take back and use in your career, in your profession, and personally. And so I, I've actually talked to you about manufacturing, a little bit about healthcare. One of my most inspirational um, teams I've worked with is teams that were rebuilding the World Trade Center. So I had the opportunity to work with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. And when you go down to the Oculus today, you come out of the train station and look up at that, it's impressive. It's incredible, in fact. But those teams, those engineers, those project teams worked very hard for many, many years to get that to where it is today. And now we all, as consumers, and part of the community get to take advantage of that. So they use these disciplines as they were creating and building that. You can use them too. Um, Non-for-profit organizations, certainly in, in IT as well. And here's just a little excerpt um, from a student just got actually in the past week. Thank you for a wonderful semester. I learned a lot and well more than I imagined. Um, I have very much, in fact, I love the format of the online class and felt like I learned not only about the curriculum but about my, my classmates. And though we are from different places, not only in the city, we got to know each other. I love the collaboration and suggest that you continue to use these tools to help students in the future. Thank you so much for bringing this for us to take advantage of. Had another student who said, I always thought project management was for IT projects. This course has made me realize that it's not only available for IT projects, but for anybody that has to create or deliver something. And I plan to use it in my personal life as well. I had somebody else who was considering open, opening a catering business who said, I've started using the things from the curriculum to craft my plan for my new business. So lots and lots of cool things that are coming from the students who've been in this curriculum. And therefore, when I think about who should apply, you know, I want to say anybody who could benefit from project management. If you're interested in a little bit more structure and learning about how this could benefit you personally and professionally, then you might want to consider it. And so CUNY's School of Professional Studies has a career service manager that helps students and alumni figure out what are the best positions and certificates to fit with their professional profile. And so I'm going to uh, toss the talking stick over to Brandon, and he's going to share with you a little bit about the admin process and how you can, you know, jump onto this program if you wish. So Brandon, over to you. Thanks, Beth. Um, and so good afternoon, everyone. So we are going to start by talking a little bit about admission to the program. And so um, in order to apply to the program, you must have at least a bachelor's degree with a 3.0 GPA. You would um, start by completing an application and submitting it along with the $75 application fee. And then you must have your official transcripts from all schools that you've attended sent to us. So this would include any graduate programs, law schools, or schools where you took classes, even if you didn't complete your degree there. Uh, we do look at your full educational history. And so for those who uh, may have foreign transcripts, we do require those as well. Uh, if you have foreign transcripts, you would submit the official transcript from the institution and you would have those transcripts officially evaluated and translated if they are in a language other than English. And so um, that evaluation can be done by an organization called 
NACES. Uh, that stands for the National Association of Credential Evaluation Services. And so um, you can find at the link on this slide um, a list of those NACES approved organizations. So next up, we're going to uh, be discussing the costs associated with the program. And so uh, the tuition and fee rates are listed on this slide. Uh, those rates are set by the CUNY Board of Trustees. I just want to note that the rates uh, illustrated here are for the current academic year. And so those are subject to uh, an increase for the fall 2019 semester. And so graduate tuition currently is $455 per credit, which is $1,365 for one three credit course. And so there are also some per semester fees attached uh, and those total $102.50. And so for one semester and one course, you'd be looking at about $1,467.50. And uh, just once again, there is a $75 fee to apply to the program and that's a one-time fee. Uh, one question that we get pretty often is if we have tuition payment plans available, and yes, we do. And so um, once you're accepted and registered in uh, class, you would be able to enroll in a payment plan if that's something that is of interest to you. And so uh, this payment plan would allow you to pay for the semester in separate installments. And so the earlier you register for class, the more payments um, you would be able to make in lower amounts. And so on this slide, uh, you'll see our web address uh, for where you can find the program page on the CUNY SPS website. So this is a screenshot that shows you that program page uh, and where the apply button is. And so that would take you to um, our website where you'd be able to create a profile and start working on your application. And so uh, just something to keep in mind, the deadline to submit your application is July 25th. Uh, so we're about two months out from that. And it's okay if your transcripts were to come in a little bit after that date, but uh, you would have to submit your application by July 25th in order to be considered for fall 2019 admission. And so with that, I'm going to pass this along to Don, who will be answering some of the most frequently, frequently asked questions that we get. Great, thanks, Brandon. Um, so you'll see here on the screen some of the things that we get asked a lot. Um, so I'll go over those. Um, and then if there are any other individual questions, we'll try to take those as well. Um, the first is how long it takes to earn the certificate. It takes three semesters due to the way that we're, we do the scheduling. Um, you take one course per semester. Another question we get a lot is if the program will help uh, students obtain um, the PMP credential or really any of PMI's credentials, and that's the Project Management Institute. Um, so the program, uh, and in particular the Fundamentals of Project Management course, will likely fulfill the project management education requirement that is um, required for obtaining PMI credentials, um, the PMP for example. However, I do want to note that this is not a prep course specifically for any of their credentials. Um, it's not designed to specifically help pass the exam. We do recommend if that is something you want to pursue, um, you would take like a prep course. Um, but we do cover PMI principles and practices in our curriculum. Um, so that, you know, that should help with that. Another question we get frequently is if uh, your GPA is not, uh, does not meet the 3.0 requirement. Um, so I would like to just stress that if that is the case, um, please do let us know and we do encourage you to apply anyway. Um, we will likely ask for a personal statement along with your application that includes information about um, why you want to take the program, information about your previous academic experience, or really anything else that will help us get a fuller picture of your academic ability. But we don't want that to be a barrier for folks to apply. Um, in terms of financial aid, uh, traditional financial aid is not available for this program since you have to be a full-time student to take part in 
um, in financial aid programs, and this is a part-time program. Um, but as mentioned earlier by Brandon, we do have a tuition payment plan option, and that is available once you are a registered student. Um, and then finally, um, how does online learning work? <laughs> so, um, as previously mentioned, the classes are asynchronous. So as I had said, you don't have to log into the course site at a specific time, but can do so at your own convenience from week to week to complete coursework. Um, interaction between students or your professor uh, typically takes place on a discussion board. Um, and you can read and respond to posts from, your, you know, you would post yourself and respond to your students. Um, there's group work that happens, especially in this program. Um, and I'm wondering, Beth, if you want to maybe talk a little bit more about how you uh, organize your course and what students could expect. Sure, sure. We, we have um, exactly the things that you said, John. So there are opportunities multiple times a semester for discussion forums. And so typically we'll for if we have four discussions, we might have four discussion leaders for the first one, uh, four more for the second one, et cetera. And the expectation is that you're you're on, you're reading uh, the conversation, you're posting your thoughts and your comments. It's kind of just like we would have in a FaceTime classroom, but it's on the, you know, in the venue of Blackboard in the discussion area. So being that it's an all online class, this is really our main vehicle to have those cross conversations. Um, the other things that we encourage, uh, certain of the assignments are posted publicly, so others can read your thoughts and your interpretation of an article that might have been assigned and read, and you'll have the opportunity, in fact, uh, the requirement to, to read others' work and, and give your thoughts and ask them questions of understanding as well. And so it's very interactive. And I think that's a surprise to some folks um, that you could have an asynchronous online curriculum but have so much interaction and getting to know other students. And so we really do encourage that tremendously. And I've got some folks who have, you know, they, they have a tight schedule, so they actually want to do their individual assignments and work well ahead. And you have that flexibility because I typically uh, try to have everything out there and ready to go for the semester. And that way, if you know you're going to be traveling, you can work ahead and make sure your assignments are in on time. Because we still do have the due dates and, and certain required deliverables as we go through the semester. But that gives you full flexibility to manage it as you need to for your life schedule as well. So lots of interaction, lots of opportunities for communication, um, open discussion forum to post any questions or comments. And of course, there is always email. Um, and so I do get several emails throughout the semester as well. Um, if students, for example, I had somebody who had a family emergency, they gave me a heads up and so that I could I could reset expectations with you know how they were going to manage their project work. Um, so we have that opportunity as well. But very interactive, everything's out there. You can plan your own schedule. You can you know follow the rigid you know week by week. I know that if that works for you, that's great. Um, so lots of flexibility, but still incredibly interactive, even though it's an online venue. And I would add to that, Beth, and tell me if you feel the same way. Um, um, it almost is um, requires you to participate even more than in a traditional classroom because you really can't like sit in the last row and kind of. <laughs> hide behind yeah, you know, your students, so true. you definitely have to participate. It is usually a requirement um, for all of our courses. Um, that, right, you know, that'll be part of your grade. Right, Yeah, exactly. for sure, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, that those discussions, the blogs, those are actually uh, a just discrete, specific part of an online course. Um, and that's pretty standard for online courses because that's the only way no, that we know that you really are engaging and thinking about applying things. Anybody can take and pass a quiz or a test, but really being able to apply things and have the conversation around it really gives us that flavor. Um, and it's much more enriching to everybody, frankly. Yep, great. So um, we 
don't have any individual questions from participants, but if you think of anything and would like to reach out to us, um, you see our contact information here. Oh, one one person just snuck one in, so let me uh, respond. Okay, we like question. questions. <laughs> yes. Um, so it says, how much time in between each classes is acceptable for this program? Um, you can skip a term, that's fine. You can actually skip two, um, and then beyond that, you would have to reapply to the program um, and be readmitted. But we do understand that, um, especially with adult learners, sometimes things come up, jobs are busy at different times of the year. So um, we don't require that you take consecutive semesters. Um, I will say that what we typically do is offer the, um, so we offer classes every fall and spring. We don't offer classes in the summer. Um, we do offer the fundamentals course, um, which is the first required course in the program every semester. And then the other two courses um, that are required, we alternate. So um, the triple constraint course is usually offered in the spring and the communication course is usually offered in the fall. So um, there are no other questions. So as I said, uh, please feel free to reach out to uh, Brandon or to myself. We will um, make this presentation available to people. Um, by email so you can have access to that as well. Um, oh, one more question just squeezed right in so that's great. It says is no, any certification <laughs> gained through completing all three courses? Yes, what you earn is a graduate level certificate from the CUNY School of Professional Studies. So this is um, like a master's level certificate program. Uh, it's an academic credential that you would earn. So that you know really shows, um, for example, employers, for instance, that you completed a rigorous um, academic, uh, you know, program, and um, you know, I think looks really good on a resume and shows shows folks that um, you know you're committed to this field and really um, tried to learn the discipline. Um, so yes, that's what you would get a graduate level certificate. Um, anything to add before we wrap up, Bess? Well, I, I would just add that it really is a great opportunity to add to any of your, um, any of your majors because it will complement any of the curriculum that you're, you're focused on if you're working to a graduate, or graduate program. And as, a, as an SPS, student who just wants to get this discipline, tremendous value. Um, again, it's really a life skill, something that you'll use all the time. Great. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for your participation. Again, please reach out with any questions that you may have. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.